Hi everyone, how are you doing? Uh, big happy new year to all our followers. Um, yeah, really happy to be back. We're gonna get straight back into it with our skills videos. So I'm super excited to bring you um, this video where we're gonna learn the basics of how to knead dough. Um, so if you haven't <laughs> heard of that word before, it's K-N, E A D, not like need, like N double E D. So need, which is working, um, working the dough to release the gluten, activate the gluten, so that we can get some nice breads, flat breads, um, lots of different things. Um, so yeah, let's get to it. You really don't need much. Um, I'm just going to show you my equipment here, and we'll get going. So this is what I've got here. I've got bread flour, um, oil, yeast, salt, a big mixing bowl, a mixing spoon, and um, I promise that's clean. That's just like tea stain, you know, um, and a cup for measuring. Um, so let's get going. Okay, so first things first is our three cups of flour. And the thing is about the ratio is it just has to be consistent. So this is my cup and you can do it by eye, you know, it's, it's very general and you don't have to be too precious about it. Um, but just make sure that you use the same cup um, every time and also you get to the same level of that cup that you're using. So we're going to go for three of these, two, three. And just letting you know that it is important that you do get um, bread flour um, because if you use sort of all purpose or self raising, they're not specifically made for bread. And yeah, you would end up, you'd end up with, you know, an, you know, a product, but it wouldn't be the right consistency. So if you can, please try and stick with the, the bread flour. Yeah, okay, so we've got our flour here. Now I just wanna mix in the rest of the dry ingredients. So that is salt, and this is one, ta one teaspoon of salt. If I had a teaspoon, it'd be a lot easier, but there we go. Um, and then a packet of yeast. This is, I think, 10 grams. I only need seven, so I'm just gonna um, guesstimate. There we go, so there we've got our dry ingredients. We've got our dry ingredients in there and now for the wet ingredients. So we wanna make, if you can see, like a little well in the middle. And this is where all of our wet ingredients is gonna go. So I'm getting my oil. Um, olive oil is best, but other oils are also fine. So just remember we did three cups of flour, now we're doing three tablespoons of oil and again it's just rough it's just a rough guideline okay and then we're not going to mix it yet we're going to leave that there now I've got my same cup filled to the same line um, of warm tap water and what we're going to do we're going to just add a little bit in at a time so there's a little drop and now we're going to incorporate this and once you see it's all incorporated you just add more into that sort of well area now if you've measured it properly or like you've, you've at least maintained your consistency is that cup of water should be the exact amount that you need and then what we do is we just get a handful of flour and flour the surface. Get our dough out. Now a really nice trick I like to do is, so at the beginning the dough is quite sticky, so I like to coat my hand in some oil and then it doesn't stick while we're kneading. Okay, so we're just gonna start moving with our uh, the base of our hands pushing down 
and because we've got oil on our hands it shouldn't be sticking yet it should it should feel like really nice <laughs> and what we're looking for is the dough to stretch before it before it comes apart so so I've been kneading this now for about seven minutes and you can see it's like smoother now and as we rip it apart it's getting even stretchier even stretchier so this is how we know see that and it's not sticking to the surface anymore so this is ready to go okay so we've got our same bowl and if you did that kneading properly you should begin to feel hot and maybe even break a sweat because that means you're like putting your whole body into it you know um, so I've also got my dough here and what we want is we just want a tea tablespoon of oil in the bowl and we want to like get it all up the sides so it doesn't stick to the sides so it doesn't stick to the bottom while it's rising okay there we go and then we get our dough we just want to fold it so we're like making it sort of neat basically tucking all the sort of messy bits underneath so it's a nice little ball <laughs> and then we just drop it in the middle and I've got um, a wet tea towel here um, with warm water I'm just gonna leave it like this in a warm place for until it doubles in size and depending on how hot it is in the area that you've left it in the time will change so I'm gonna check on this in 40 minutes and we'll see where we're at so you can see this has doubled in size, more than doubled in size, and we're getting starting to get some of these lovely air bubbles um, brewing there, which is exactly what we want to see. Um, yeah, so all we need to do now is take it out of the, the bowl onto a floured surface, and because you've oiled it, it should just gently come out like that okay now if you're going to make bread you would mold this into the the bread tin that you're going to cook it in and then you let it rise again and you put it in the oven but since we're just going to be making really easy flatbreads um i'm just going to show you what you can do straight away so i'm going to get my frying pan and put this on a medium heat to warm it up There we go and then um, if you wanted to make you know like equal um, equally sized um, flatbreads then you could you know chop it in half chop it in half again chop it in half again um, but for for this exercise I'm just going to take um, one from the edge there I'm gonna get it into a sort of a ball there we go. And then I'm going to start pushing it with my fingers, flipping it, flipping it. And if it starts to get sticky on the surface, it's a tiny bit of flour on there. And then you just carry on stretching it out. You don't want it to be too thin, but we sort of want it to. And obviously, if you've got um, if you've got a rolling pin, you're more than welcome to use a rolling pin. However, I just wanted to show you that if you don't have a rolling pin, it also doesn't matter. There we go. And so you can see, see now you can. Some of it's getting really thin there, so I'm I'm actually just going to stop. I'm going to stop there, and that's going to be my flatbread now. My pan should be really hot and it's a dry pan. Okay, so my pan is really hot now and it's a dry pan. 
I'm just going to gently put this in there and it should be around two minutes on each side so I'm going to show you after two minutes okay so my bread has about one minute left but I just thought I'd show you how bubbly and delicious this is looking if yours is getting like this then you're really doing something right because um, all those air pockets it's really going to bring that amazing texture um, so yeah about 40 seconds to go so two minutes is gone and I'm just gonna flip this there we go, looking good. And it's likely that um, when you flip it on the other side, it needs just slightly less time. So I'm going to do 1 minute 30 on this side. Okay, so it's been 1 minute 30, and I'm going to just show you what the other side is looking like. Yes, this is looking great. And that's your flatbread done. So guys, there we have it. It honestly looks incredible. What I've done is I've just added a little drizzle of olive oil, bit of salt, bit of pepper, um, and that green gorgeous stuff there is coriander. Um, just finely chopped, sprinkled on the top. And yeah, really delicious flatbread. Um, but yeah, the, the point of this, this tutorial was really to get you comfortable with kneading, kneading dough. Um, so yeah, hope you get some practice in this week. Cheers, bye!